Hi guys, so I have here my computer which is totally blank right now. It's a Windows 7 computer but if you're using Windows 8 or a Mac it'll be pretty much the same process. I'm just going to open up an internet browser uh, anyone will do and I'm going to type in to a search window Google Chrome and then I'm just going to click on the link there. Uh, it should be the first result. When the page loads, I can then download Google Chrome and set it as my default browser. It should take about 30 seconds to a minute to install. If you get any security prompts, then just click yes or accept and let the process proceed. Okay, so Chrome has been installed. It's now asking us to sign in. This is actually pretty important because uh, as it says here, if you sign in, then it will memorize your bookmarks, uh, browsing history, form, uh, form entries, like things that you've typed in to forms, and it will save you a lot of time in future when you're browsing. It'll also synchronize all of that to other devices. So if you log into a different computer on Google Chrome and use this account that we're going to set up, then all of the same settings will, will go onto that computer as well, or that mobile device. And It'll mean you never really lose your bookmarks and, and you can get to the same sites um, and kind of use all the passwords without having to note them down too much. If you already have an account, you can use that, but it's better to start a fresh account just so that you don't have any spam and you don't have personal effects being mix mixed in with your new uh, business or enterprise that you're setting up. So we're just going to go here and create an account you'll be presented with a form which is really straightforward just fill it in with all of your details the only thing of note is here uh, your username it's not really that important what you put here you can really use anything it doesn't need to even be related to your brand or your domain name this is just really a username later on you'll begin using an at uh, your domain name um, email address and pretty much everything from there will be branded with whatever domain name you want to buy and use for your website. So don't be too fussy about this because in any case 99% of the plain usernames are already taken. So I'm just going to fill this out and then move on to the next step. Okay so this is the next step. Google just wants to verify your account uh, it's really easy to set up an account obviously you don't have to pay anything so they just want to make sure that you're a real person and you're not setting up a million accounts to use for spam so you just have to give them a, a correct phone or mobile number if you give them a mobile number then th the code comes from a text message so I'm just going to go ahead and do that and the text message should come through in 30 seconds to a minute generally Okay, it's about a minute later and I've got my verification code, so I just punch that in and continue to the next step. At this point, it will ask you to create your public Google Plus profile, which you don't really need to do. We don't need a Google Plus profile for this particular account. We can go in later, add a branded uh, email address to this account and then create the Google Plus profile on that. So if you click no thanks, it doesn't really seem to do anything. A way of getting around that is just to click the reload page and that will get you out of that situation and, and just to a login screen where you can now log in with the newly created account. And once you do that, you're now signed into Chrome everything you do will be synchronized to other devices that you sign into which is really a big boost in efficiency. There are a few pop-ups that kind of explain the basics but 
we don't really need to pay too much attention. It's it's a internet browser. You type in the search terms here or the web address. It has a bookmarks bar. The only thing that I'm going to do is change a couple of the default settings. So to get to settings, it's this kind of bar symbol there. Go into settings and the most efficient one I find is to switch on startup to continue where you left off. So if you have pages open and you close the browser, when you open it up there, they go back to where they were. You can also show the home button if you want to and I do want to do that as well as always show the bookmarks bar so this bar up here I like to have it handy at all times it doesn't have any bookmarks in it yet but if you want to add a bookmark you just click on this little star it'll ask you what you want to call the bookmark and then where you want to put it so bookmarks bar is the bar here or you can choose another folder which involves you know creating folders once you get too many bookmarks to fit on the bar you then move them into folders and and stay organized that way the other thing that we're going to look at very quickly is Google Apps which you now have as part of your Google account these are really useful especially on a computer like this you don't really have any other software you're going to need some basic uh, word processing spreadsheets and presentation software you can go for a paid solution like Microsoft Office if you want there are free options as well like open office and Libra office but Google Docs sheets slides and there are a couple of other ones that aren't here on the on the quick bar but uh, they're very good they're really as good as any paid solution and a big advantage as well is that they synchronize with Google Drive which we're going to have a look at next you can take a tour it'll show you what is somewhat unfamiliar in terms of navigation if you want to create a new document it's down here at the bottom right once you actually get into the document editing interface, things are pretty familiar. You have very similar drop-down menus to what you would find in any other desktop application. So you can go ahead and explore that in your own time. What we are going to have a look at in a bit more detail is Google Drive. This is a really, really useful application. Um, I guess you would call it that. What this is, is it's a bit of cloud storage that Google gives you on their servers. Uh, you can create files using Google Apps and they will live in this cloud storage. But you can actually also keep files on your computer and, and have them automatically synchronize with Google Drive. And this is I guess you wouldn't call it a traditional backup solution, but for most people it does serve as a backup. It means that if you lose the computer that you're working on locally, uh, you can just go to Google Drive and get all of those files back. And, you know, it covers you for pretty much every instance. Fire, theft, power surges, you dropped your laptop, you spilled coffee on it whatever the case you can really easily get your stuff back and if you're traveling if you're in another country you can just go onto the internet log into Google Drive and get to all of your files so it's super useful for personal and business the uh, what you have by default here is just the web-based Google Drive if you want to synchronize it with your computer you have to go to an additional step which is to click on this cog at the right here which is the settings and download drive so again this is really straightforward it's very apparent what you need to do download drive and then choose which what kind of device so I'm on a PC right now I'm just gonna choose PC similarly uh, the options 
all the default options are perfectly good. If you want to, you can help Google by sending them crash reports and so on. And accept and install. So now it downloads a very small application, which when you click on it and run it, this will go through the process of downloading the actual synchronization software and installing it on your computer. So you don't have to do anything further. You just wait, again, 30 seconds to a minute. And next thing you know, you will have Google Drive running on your computer, which will then synchronize files to the cloud in real time. So we'll just wait for that to finish. And we should get a pop-up very shortly. You can see there the Google Drive symbols now appeared in my taskbar. And it's giving me a little intro. So the first thing, it wants me to sign in. Which Google account do I want to use? Uh, this is a previous one that I've set up. So I'm just going to switch over and add the account that I created just now. Sign in. And it takes me through a couple of introductory pages just to let me know what what it can do and how it works, the very basics, which are worth having a look at, but I'm already familiar with it, so I'm just going to skip through. This um, conflicting files is just telling me that there are some files in my local Google Drive uh, that don't exist on the Google Drive that's on the web. So I'm just going to tell it to continue syncing anyway. These files I put there on previous demonstrations so we can just ignore those but you will see that within a few moments they will appear on the web version of, of Google Drive and even if I create a new document of, of any kind it will begin synchronizing the little blue arrows there mean that it's synchronizing and the green ticks mean that it has already finished synchronizing so you can see there those files have appeared on Google Drive in the cloud this is also really useful for sharing files. You can right click and you get a context menu that will let you share any files from your Google Drive. And it means that you can, rather than emailing files, which there are always limitations on the size of a file that you can email, you can send them via email a link to download the file from your Google Drive. So you can either get that link uh, copy it and paste it into an email, an email, or you can use Gmail to send the link. You just type in the email address here. So that is the essentials of, of Google, creating a Google account using Google Chrome, and the basics of Google Drive. We will carry on in later tutorials to look at these in a bit more detail add some more applications to the computer and, and some things that get, are going to help us stay organized while we continue the rest of the setting up process. It's all fairly simple and if you just follow these steps, these are the current steps at 23rd of November 2014, so they're brand new. Everything that you see here should be exactly as I've done it. Um, and I'm not using anything special in terms of computing. So go ahead and, and follow these steps through and, and check out the next tutorial as we continue along. Thank you.